Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Back for another week. Back for another week, indeed, boys. Um, and it is this week, which we, did, we didn't talk about this last week, but basically... We're back this week where half the country is in lockdown and, and we are not, uh, strangely enough. It's almost like... I saw a, um, a good Simpsons gif where it's, uh-huh. uh, it's Marge yelling out um, and in, in the uh, Simpsons episode, she yells, Bart, no! And Bart's like, Mum, I'm right here. And she goes, sorry, force of habit. Lisa, no! Um, <laughs> and but it was, Victoria, no! <laughs> Mum, I'm right here. <laughs> sorry, force of habit. New South Wales, No! See, the Simpsons thing I've seen referencing this week is when they think about the origins of April Fool's Day and on the pyre, like a burning, witch-burning pyre, they've got the Flanders family, but they're all like Queensland, New South Wales, W-A-N-T, and the Simpsons family are all Victoria going, now who's laughing? Now (laughs) who's who's laughing? laughing? And doing their (laughs) chant. But no, but seriously, people. People are going to die. People are dying. Um, <laughs> it's yeah, a bad time. Like two hundred and something. It's like, part, part of me is yeah. part of me is like, oh, like the Scheidenfreude of it aspect of it. Is I think like, we really need to dig deep but, and exercise a bit of our empathy for our brothers and sisters in Queensland and New South Wales, um, because you know, otherwise we won't be able to whinge about how bad we had it during our extended lockdown. If they've got extended lockdowns as well, then we're not special. And it's good to have something to mm-hmm. talk about at the pub. Um, I like to be able to say, you know, they just don't, you know, they don't know what it was like, really. I'm implying George yeah. goes to the pub. <laughs> I've been to the to pub. Strangers. I've been to the pub. How dare you, Adam? You have and you I- been to your local pub? Have you been to the one up the road? No, it's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I do that? Why would you do that? They do have $7 pints, though, if that gives you any indication of the quality of the establishment. Ooh. Ooh. Bargain. Bargain. I mean, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's piss, so probably not a bargain, but... <laughs> um, um, yeah, I don't think I've ever gone yeah. to, like, my local kind of, like, RSL-type establishment. I don't think that's ever been, like, something that's been on my radar. I don't know about you guys, but... Mm. Oh, I mean, like I've I've been to them before, but yeah, normally like my not my go to, but you know, I'm a I'm a craft beer wanker. I make no aspersions to the contrary. Yeah, no, no. So if, what I'm saying is, I'm a horrible snob. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, I'm I'm a huge snob about that sort of stuff. For the reason so that I'm telling me, tap, that. I'm not into it. So you guys are telling me, like, if someone said five dollar pints of Carlton at your local pub between this hour and this hour, you guys wouldn't be like. Here's the thing. Actually, you're pretty good. No. I'm Here's the thing. If, if Pay you five dollars invited... to not drink the, the <laughs> cup, like yeah. Here's the irony of the whole situation. If like you invited me, Adam, to my yeah. local pub for a drink, I'd probably have a fucking whale of a time. <laughs> like I'd probably go <laughs> down there, have a bunch of beers, you know, stumble home and go, "This is fucking brilliant. Why don't we do this all the time?" Like that. That would 100 percent be the outcome. But for some reason, I feel as I'm better oh. than it. I'd have to come towards Morty Alec though, so mm. not happening. Um, not to know, it's a vague area where George lives. That's in a direction. <laughs> direction. <laughs> Adam <laughs> catches himself. <laughs> uh, <laughs> 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 like that time you gave away your full address on the show, I think many yeah, years ago. Fine. It's a place you no longer live, so it's fine. But, you know, that was dicey. Ke- uh, ke- anyway, yes. Keen eared listeners of the show will remember uh, Adam's former dress in Carnegie. You can uh, stalk the uh, the old Greek lady that now resides yep. uh, where he used to live. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So we're a newsy type stuff and things uh, podcast, uh, as we sort of said up the up the top. And yeah, the most of the country's in lockdown, all during the uh, you know the period where we were unsure who our prime minister was, thanks to the old root rat coming back and our current one being in quarantine because he'd recently been overseas to be laughed at by the G7 for not doing enough on climate change. Um, Sorry, the root rat being, yeah. of course, um, everyone's red-faced uh, tomato favourite, Barnaby Joyce. Yes, Barnaby Joyce. Uh, yeah, the smash beetroot himself. Um, uh, jo- Joyce to the world, you might say. <laughs> that is returned. That that was oh, oh dear oh dear uh, long show God. it's gonna be a long show yeah, <laughs> strap yeah. in yeah sixty more minutes of this oh boy um, 
Yes, but then the uh, it's it's all been developing. Uh, so, so much has happened in this past week. Adam, Adam and I were hanging out earlier this afternoon. Sorry, George. Um, and Fuck, we were talking about how guys. some crazy bullshit has really happened this week, and so much has happened in the past couple of weeks that mm. we haven't even been able to touch on because of how cooked the current situation mm. in Australia has been with the pandemic response and stuff like that. I mean, sorry, Tom. Uh, to say that there's been a pandemic response would insinuate that there has been some sort of governmental response to the pandemic, and I don't think that's a fair whoa. characterization of what's happened thus far. I mean, things like you know, job keeper happened. That's a response. They all they've done, all this federal <laughs> government <back>. done, all <laughs> yes. they've done is make money machine go brr. That's the only good thing that they've done throughout this pandemic is just make it rain in various areas. They've signed some checks and they've kept moving. In terms of the actual fucking things that they've rolled out, I don't know that there's any successful part of what, what this administration has done to successfully try and, you know, help with quarantine facilities, aged care, um, you know, vaccine rollout, all the things that have been the federal government's responsibility have just been like thoroughly fucking well done, overcooked. <laughs> Well, mm. on that note, where would you like to start today? Would you like to go do, give you some options? Should, give, we, give you should we start with the $660 million corruption scandal? We could do that, or, or we could potentially go to the um, the attempt at having a four-point plan to, to formulate some sort of national plan. It's a plan we for could, a plan. <laughs> it's a plan for a plan. We yeah. could also go to the fact that the government's contradicting its own... Um, uh, medical, you know, health advice. medical health advice. Um, Let's start there. Um, okay, so <laughs> after the national cabinet meeting that happened uh, last week, um, old ScoMo PM Dash Lodge comes out and um, announces um, quite off the cuff that love a good announceable. That uh, they love a good announceable. This government it doesn't matter if there's literally no content behind it whatsoever. As long as you can announce something, then then you're all good. Um, so he announces that anyone has now got the ability to go and provided that they are made aware of, you know, pr provided that they're provided with all the disclosures and, and you know, have a, a, a consult with their GP and assess the risk, anyone is now able to go and get the AstraZeneca vaccine, to which the um, uh, f fringe organisation, the Australian Medical Association, said, Raggy? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. what? <laughs> what are you talking about, buddy? To which all, yeah, and all the premiers that were also in the national cabinet meeting were like, that's not what we talked about. That's, we did not, that's yeah. not a thing that we discussed in this meeting. The, where, so basically, there was stuff about an indemnity situation saying, like, okay, GPs that administer the vaccine will now be held harmless in the case of an, an adverse event, of one of their patients, if something happens. Um, and that was all they discussed during this meeting. And then Scrammer's like, oh, yeah, just fucking go and get the AstraZeneca, right? Eh? And which, which, is not, which does is, not comport with any of the medical advice or anything anyone uh, is recommending. The thing is, that's according to Dr. Norman Swan, uh -huh. which is the ABC's specialist, yes. that's always been the that's case. That's always been the case. But yes, yeah, the only but, difference is that they've now got the indemnity thing in place. If you're advertising it, if you are saying to people, hey, this is a thing you can do, go and get the AstraZeneca. We've got a bunch of it sitting on the shelf, you know, hundreds of thousands of doses that none of the boomers want because they're being selfish pricks um, and it's going to go off if it just sits there. Um, like, fucking have at it, I guess. Like, that's not medical advice. Mm. That, that's, but if you're positioning it in that way of like, hey, anyone can go and get it, you are encouraging young people to go and get the vaccine, which the numbers of people that are under 40 that are now going to get the AstraZeneca vaccine in light of this announcement has like increased by tenfold like it has been a massive massive increase in the number Stay, of young there was people. like three or four thousand people that took up the offer or something and, like I, and i'm seriously thinking yeah. about taking it up myself i think the risks of you know a blood clot are pretty minimal um and i just want to fucking get it done <laughs> like i just want to get i just want this to be over can i make can well, we get this over now please yeah the more the more of us vaccinated the better um but it caused shall we say a shit storm uh on a lot of fronts one from just everyone being confused on the internet but then yeah. also um like people, uh, people w weren't confused on the internet before <laughs> that too um but three GP, fucking times uh, three times since this dog shit fake vaccine rollout has fucking started three times they've changed the fucking advice meanwhile atagi the australian technical advisory group on immunization 
who would might want to be consulted when making these sorts of announcements, says that Pfizer is still the preferred vaccine for under 60s due to the higher risk of blood clots, which we mentioned previously. So, yeah, like but the, th- the thing I was oh, seeing yeah. everywhere was that GPs and so because obviously, yeah, it's not a it's not a case of rocking up to a mass vaccination center. Like it has, you know, you have to have had a consultation with your GP and all that sort of stuff. If you're under 60 and want to get the AstraZeneca vaccine, but people were then, all right. And they called their GP to book an appointment and Mm. receptionists on, uh, you know, on the front line said, what, what do you mean you can get the AstraZeneca? Because they're not told anything. Like they weren't like the, the information wasn't known out there. And no, Mr. 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 Skomo, no home. Like oh, sorry, no all I'm this sort of shit. And then uh, there was someone I saw on Twitter uh, who said, like, you know, I'm 30 years old and I'm going to try and get the AstraZeneca and I'm going to document my experience. And their experience was something like, you know, I called the uh, state coronavirus hotline here in Victoria and they said, um, no, we're not offering you can't just get the AstraZeneca at a max vaccina- vaccination hub, but they won't administer it. And so that, and you, you know, you are not going to give it to you either. Like, you, you know, you are not eligible for it. And then they went, all right. And they called the federal coronavirus hotline who said, Oh no, no. Yeah. The Victorian guys oh, at the ma- yeah, vaccination yeah, hub will give it to you. And then they said, no, no, you can check out, um, you know, you go to this, this website to check your eligibility and all this sort of stuff. And it'll tell you like when and where you can get vaccinated. And so they hopped on there and they did. And it said, you aren't eligible and you can't get it. So then they called their doctor. Flawless, and the, flawless and, yeah, vaccine rollout. Nailing it, res- absolutely nailing yeah, it. And the receptionist was like, no, like that's not something we do. Like I don't like fully understand. And someone else gave them a tip. Like then a, like a friend gave them a tip off of a different uh, GP because they were looking for one that was bulk build that would do it. And then uh, they said they booked in for their appointment. But it was just to get like, all these mixed point. messages, just the translations not going well anywhere. The, the key, I'm no so one talked to anyone else. ScoMo just like, f- like, you know, fired from the hip I'm, in that press conference I'm and is sure, just committing to the bit. I'm sure that Atagi's advice would be have as many different messages out there as possible. Yeah. And just have one all of the information the siloed in different areas. And that's the most effective way to conduct a vaccine rollout is to just hmm. really shoot from the hip. Um, don't do any research. Don't control. Don't consult any of the major peak bodies that would be involved in the decision yeah, making. Nah. Don't even talk None to the of premiers that. of the states. Really just come out and start announcing shit and cause maximum confusion. Mm. That is definitely the best way to conduct a <laughs> vaccine rollout, you fucking troglodyte. And then you've got... Um, yeah. Uh, Dr. Speaking of the Premier Jeanette Young um, in, in oh, Queensland, yeah, yeah. basically just being like, because they're you know in the midst of a, a lockdown at the moment in, uh, for the Brisbane City Council, I think. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, she's like, you know, I don't want people dying from. She said, from I don't a want an eighteen-year-old dying of a blood clot when, if that same eighteen-year-old was likely to get coronavirus, then more than likely they'd be fine. Like, and that's kicked off a whole thing she's since apologized yeah, for those comments but it's say, kind of yeah. like when i saw her messaging i was like i know you're kind of saying like hey our, like you're giving the advice of i don't like you know following up the uh i forget the name of the peak body sorry there that you mentioned there george but um the immunization uh people who sort of said hey this isn't our advice either like the medical advice doesn't mm. corroborate this yeah for like i get that she was criticizing that but then for her just to throw out like you know, an anti-vaxxer's wet dream of, Mm. I don't want the first death from a vaccine to come to someone who's 18 because it's definitely going to kill you. I'm like, no, that's not the messaging we want either. You're fucking this. It's just the whole thing has just been an absolute shit show. Like from, from start to finish. And Adam's like, no, 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 surely they couldn't be, like, pulling it out of their fucking dirty assholes. Surely it must be informed by the medical advice. So I go, well, how, how do you like me now, Adam? How does this sound like informed by the medical advice to you, mate? I'd love to see how you could fucking relatively- turn this around with your optimistic brain and turn it around and make it sound like there's somehow a competent individuals <laughs> driving this fucking train. They've been... <laughs> Relatively consistent up until this point. Consistently shit. Advice. Consistently <laughs> terrible. The advice has changed several times. How dare you? And they've had to update it to the medical <laughs> advice. And now they've got to the point where they're just... I don't know whether that was ScoMo like, just shooting from the hip or whether like someone in the Liberal marketing team's gone, 
What's our comms for today? What's on the talking points? Okay, so we, it's like, a, like it's literally the writers of Utopia, which is an Australian political mm. satire show, must be sitting there just like writing down notes, just being like, "Yep, okay. it is and, beyond and satire." <laughs> um, I nearly died oh, yeah. during that just section. I hope you're both proud. That's exactly <laughs> when I decided to take a sip of water, and then after George's <laughs> rant, hearing Adam say they've been consistent up to this point, I was like. <laughs> George is about to explode, and then I couldn't hold myself. Like I was Literally trying to not to choke on a mouthful of water. About to burst into flames <laughs> over here. Meanwhile, oh. you've got you know. Meanwhile, you've got outbreaks. You know, in I think it was is it New South Wales where you've got people at hospitals not vaccinated. You've yeah. got um, you know, and they're passing it round. You know, you've got I, I airline just, staff so not vaccinated. The, the whole thing um, about a vaccine of any kind of mass health rollout is you need to keep it idiot proof. Right, you need to keep the rules so dead dumb basic that every moron, the dumbest person you know, is a member of this country that also needs to figure this out and get vaccinated. So when a thirty-year-old goes to the panel on Q and A, there's some pollies on there, um, medical experts, and says, "Hey, I'm thirty-one. Should I just go and get the AstraZeneca vaccine?" And there isn't a clear fucking answer one way or another. That's a real fucking problem. Like. The yeah. one thing you need is clarity of purpose and clear, simple messaging for the dumbest amongst us to be able to follow. If us, if us three who are into this, you know, well-read and up-to-date and on top of this sort of shit, if we don't know whether we should go and get vaccinated, I fucking guarantee goddamn to you that no I one else out. knows either. I filled out the online form and it was like, am I eligible? And it was like, no. But then it's like, you can get an email reminder as to when you are eligible. And I'm yet to receive that email reminder. <laughs> but nope. as to whether or not they're updating the algorithm on the back end to send no. out those email reminders, the, who fucking knows? The, uh, what's that Kafka line? <laughs> the forms must be filled out in triplicate, but there are no forms available. That is literally the fucking world that we're living in with, the, with oh. this coronavirus vaccine rollout. Um, but anyway, look, guys, don't worry about it, though, because there's a four-point plan. There's a four-point oh, yes. plan. Yeah, and we because- look. You know, the government's. You know, they're they're getting more concise. It used to be a six point plan. Uh, you know, back in the day when Abbott was uh, elected. Yeah. Now they've got down to four point plans. It's um, a four point plan that nobody knows. Um, yeah. I, I think that before you get into the description <laughs> of just how bonkers and inept this four four step plan to get us out of the pandemic mm-hmm. is, it came after uh, what was it three days of yeah. just in commun- like no communications. Yeah. From Scott Morrison. I think Mr. I remember Mr. seeing... Mr. Um, gets a huge hard-on for announceables. Yes. Had nothing to talk about for three days. And then they're like, don't worry, we got a plan. 16 I, months in, everybody, we've got a plan. I um, I saw, I think it was a Batuta Advocate headline. It's like, like mouthiest cunts in the room haven't been heard from in 72 hours. Like, yeah. this is like the, the, the loudest cunts ever haven't been heard from in three days. Like, let's send out the SES kind of thing. Like, they've gone missing. Like, it's just think, amazing. Um, the four-step uh, plan. Mariel from Marketing's decided now. I don't know. What, what was the name I used last week? I'm going to go with Mariel Carol. this week. Ma- Mariel, Carol. wasn't it? Meryl, Mabel? Meryl, Meryl, yeah, it was Meryl, Meryl from marketing. Meryl yeah, from marketing. Yeah. Meryl from marketing. Uh, obviously, has decided. Uh, look, we're just gonna. Sometimes, the best thing you can do is do nothing, hmm. and we're just gonna take everyone offline, take it all offline, and then we'll make it announceable mm-hmm. when we're ready. Uh, turns out though, the announceable wasn't quite ready because they haven't worked out any of the details. They've got Great. four mm-hmm. points as to what those four points mean. No one's really sure yet. Yeah. yeah, they haven't well, quite I, yeah. refined it down to a three-word slogan just yet, but re- rest assured that is coming. So hey, maybe two, a, two of the two of the phases Goats. have two of the phases of the four-phase plan have three-word descriptors. Okay, Damn, that kind of counts. So phase one, let, let's go through it. We've got we've all got the article here. So mm. phase one is the phase that we're already in, right? Done. Um, Take that one off the list. It's like when you've right. just done the groceries and then you yeah. make your to-do list and you write down, do the groceries and then tick it off because you just like, need that little dopamine hit. Yeah. You're like, yep, say, nailed it. I'm already halfway there, mate. Yeah, I was going to say, it feels like cheating. Like, it feels <laughs> like you, you're cheating on your homework when you kind of like, well, phase one, we're, we're already doing phase one. Well, right? the, right, right, the yeah, thing yeah. is, the reason why they've got phase one is because they gave them an excuse to slash international rivals by 50%. Great. Uh, but they're going to increase the amount of repatriation flights which 
means more that flights, sh- just fewer people on them. <laughs> Basically, okay. Um, and they're going to experiment with different forms of quarantine and all this kind of stuff. Experiment. Um, Experiment. Oh, good. Oh, good. So we're going to change up the quarantine system, but not to one that we know works. Just one that we think will work. You Maybe know, this won't fuck the country as much as the last one. Her name is Camille. She is an nineteen-year-old French girl, and she wants to experiment. <laughs> so phase two. Ah, Adam, I think you've skipped over a point already that is a huge point of contention, at least for me. I don't know about okay. you guys. No, go. I haven't read it that well. So when so all right, so yeah, if we're in phase one of being, you know, slashing numbers of arrivals and uh, you know, uh maybe coming up with ways to develop other like ways of tracking who's vaccinated and all that sort of stuff. Then we can move on to phase two. What when? When can we move on to phase two? What's the thing that says, all right, we're ready for the next phase? I don't know. That's when and phase no, no, Tom, it's when phase one is over. That's when we move to phase two. Yeah. Like, because that's the thing. Phase three, profit. The way they talked about it, it was like, you know, the, the chief medical uh, officer, Paul Kelly, uh, not the Paul Kelly you're thinking of, um, was tasked to, uh, you know, to work with experts and all that sort of stuff to come up with like vaccination thešholds to be tied to what, moves on to the next stage. And um, Scott Morrison was quoted as saying that, like, you know, it's not going to be based on people's opinions or their politics. It'll be based on that scientific evidence. But ScoMo being ScoMo, of course, he didn't actually commit to a time frame or to, like, what actual, like, number of percent or percentage of people to be vaccinated that would mean. So what the percentages are, basically. So they've announced something which they're not actually sure about how it's going to work. Uh, like uh, at least when we were in turbo lockdown last year at least there was a bar that we were chasing mm. like you know what i mean they were saying like if we can be oh, uh, no, we all mocked it right when it was all like if we can get down to just only like five cases average per day then we can move on to the next phase mm. and we were all like we'll never get it that low and then we did mm. but at least there was a bar, but this is just, oh, yeah, yeah. And then in phase two, uh, and the line they've got here in the ABC is that case numbers will become less of a focus in phase two. I'm like, okay. All right, I guess I'll stop being anxious what, what, about it then. But where Thanks. do we have to be at for case numbers to then suddenly be less of a focus? What's the number? What's the number? <laughs> I don't. The plan oh, is, so what, uh, it just makes me like incandescent with rage. Cause it's like, yep. what the fuck have you cunts been doing for the last 18 months? <laughs> like you had so long to think about we, this. We, oh, you were busy cutting, you're doubling the cost of arts degrees <laughs> that we had time for. We didn't have time for the report on sexual assault to implement any of that because of COVID. We didn't have time. We had time to do degrees. We had time to do all this other sort mm-hmm. of dog shit that we jammed through in the meantime, but we didn't have time. Apparently no one in the entire Whole of government approach, fucking coag, massive Australian government apparatus. None of these pricks ever just put pen to paper and gone, I wonder what this looks like when we get out of it. <laughs> Apparently no one came up with no. any sort of well, plan before this. Phase phase two. So that would include things like easing restrictions like lockdowns, because lockdowns are bad, and border controls on well, vaccinated not, people. Not just easing up yes. lockdowns, but actually removing the legal ability for... That's state premiers to. That's phase three, George. Okay, I think okay, that's right. phase, three. phase three. Phase three, but I think in phase two also they mentioned unvaccinated people. So that is assuming that they have successfully. So there's a benchmark that we can at least infer from this that they have their digital way of verifying if someone's vaccinated or not. Some sort of raising COVID raising passport. inbound passenger numbers again. So mm-hmm. capped entry for student economic visa holders, new quarantine arrangements for vaccinated travellers, um, and, yeah, raising passenger caps. So oh, okay. implementing and preparing a vaccine booster program. Because remember, you're not vaccinated permanently, apparently. After you've gone through all the clusterfucks that we've been talking about here to get your vaccination injection, you'll need a booster later on, which I'll be in charge of as well, and it's got to go great. Um, yeah, and then well, with all the variants, presumably that are going to keep coming out, this is just going to be something we're just going to have to mm. just keep consistently dealing yeah. with is getting new, new vaccines and updated vaccines. Yeah. And it's going to be yearly fully shot kind yeah. of thing. Right. Kind of what the right. aim is. And then at some point uh, it, during that phase two, apparently it'll be appropriate to go to phase three. What that point is, who the fuck knows? But phase three, we get our first three-word catchphrase, George. Here we go. Phase three, 
No more lockdowns. Mm. Short, sharp, to the point. We've listened. Lockdowns will be a thing of the past. And we've acted on Sky News' recommendations. Mm-hmm. We've listened to and Alan then... Joyce. To Alan Jones. <laughs> Alan okay. Jones and, and Alan Joyce, I suppose, the Qantas CEO. Yep. All, all of those people really don't want any more lockdowns. So we're just not going to no. have it. We're going to remove the legal apparatus to have lockdowns and have that be a yeah. thing that can be done. Now, yeah, again, phase... no clarity whatsoever on how many people yeah. would need to be vaccinated, what that means. Like, no more lockdowns, unless we really need a lockdown, in which case we would have to do a lockdown. Yeah, <laughs> like, and like, if the virus just... mutates again, so vaccines aren't effective, well, I mean, you know. Yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah. So if there's a brand new strain and no one's vaccinated against it and everyone can get infected, they just go, no, 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 you said. <laughs> no more <laughs> no lockdown. More lockdown. No you more said, lockdown. I know people die. are dying in the streets <laughs> like dogs, but you did say it's three words like no more lockdown. That I can yeah. easily, as a simple-minded Sky News viewer, I can get my arms around that so that i can definitely yeah i can vote for and phases three and four once we get to this point given how few like commitments or targets or anything there have been in phases one and two phase three and four just read like uh just a a a a wet dream future for them it's like oh by phase three no more lockdowns a vaccine booster program will be underway uh vaccinated people won't have to abide by any domestic restrictions uh there'll be no caps on returning overseas people and like we'll be widening travel bubbles and phase four is called back to normal almost like almost right there's a fourth <laughs> word in their three word slogan but cool. um back to but normal yeah, phases, question yeah. mark no back yeah no back to normal question mark, good comma question mark back to normal yeah but yeah phases yeah. three and four just sound like a, oh yeah, yeah yeah like all the all the things that we want to have oh yeah they'll be in place by then yeah also um anything that it'll take to at least even get us to that point phase four, all from marketing or filling with details it's okay phase four back to normal um so uh, everyone gets a job that pays them one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. That's also happens in phase four. Uh, housing, oh, amazing. Uh, all houses cost three hundred thousand uh, dollars in this new back to normal. Even better. And uh, they've figured out a way to clone Miranda Kerr and um, and uh, yeah, and obviously uh, all sexually transmitted diseases have also been abolished. So it's um, yeah, pretty good phase four. How we get there, mate? That's detail. Don't worry about it. Fear, what do you know? Thinking about it? Don't think about it. Scott Rose authorizes the Gamora to go on camera. <laughs> when it goes back to normal as well, the unemployment rate also goes back up to 5% because uh, that's you know, by we, design, apparently. By design, yeah. yeah it's, uh, started on that. Fantastic analysis in uh, the ABC today that I read where I was like, oh, oh, this actually really frames how it's by design that mm. a lot of people are in poverty. Oh, for I, I remember that. could fix it, but that, it would, that would make inflation. That awkward, economist. So. No, that, but it wouldn't. It was great. That, <laughs> that's that what that the economist, article talked about. That economist that I quoted from the conversation a couple of weeks ago basically made that, made that assessment, was that we have a permanent underclass of people who we like mm. to keep poor from a public policy perspective because it reduces the risk of inflation for the rest of us. And yeah. it keeps wages nice and low, keeps everyone in the big business community very happy. And um Yeah. And that's it. And like it, that's there is a reason that we have as much poverty as we have, as because they are comfortable with an inflation number that is lower than it otherwise might hmm. be if we had full employment and had wage and- growth. And as we saw last year with, uh, you know, the increases of coronavirus supplements and all that sort of stuff, they could just lift all those people out of poverty whenever they want. Yeah. Here's a really good way to not make people poor anymore. Give them money. It's a really easy way to make sure that there are no more poor people. Turns out childhood poverty halved in the United States as a result of the coronavirus supplements. Like... To, that, that is just a solvable... Oh, that's just like money machine go... Brr, and we solved some fucking horrendous per- what we otherwise thought of as permanent unsolvable problems we just fixed with money i was like oh, yeah. okay didn't realize and we then, could just do oh. that and then if you factored into that as well i don't know taxing billionaires and things there's so many more things you can just fix like remember jeff bezos has decided to not end world hunger today yes. and he's chosen to do that every day for a he long time going time. into space so you know money well spent oh, um, money well spent not if richard branson beats him there first apparently because yeah. getting to space is now the big billionaire the big swing imagine, in imagine, <laughs> imagine being literally so with rockets which are valid Imagine being so monumentally out of touch 
that given everything that's gone on in the past year, a, a year and a half, mm-hmm. that your major focus is beating the one other rich guy into space. That's your main focus rather than using your ginormous Smaug-esque piles of wealth to maybe help some people other than yourself for a change yeah. once in your miserable cunting lives. Okay, no, no, no. I want to make sure I get to space nine days before Jeff because I got the biggest dick. And especially, like, I, uh, in the context of when your billions comes from things like retail, <laughs> mm. um, don't you want these people to be alive and spending money? Honestly, Tom, to be giving honestly, you Tom, your wealth? they don't give a fuck. They don't the, give a fuck, yeah, The, the billionaires point. at this point literally do not care if you live or die. Yeah, like You're, Amazon could go out of business and basically... It wouldn't matter talk. because yeah. he's still a yeah. fucking squillionaire. The world... Yeah. It's just the hierarchy <laughs> has gotten so rigid that they are at risk of toppling themselves over and taking all of us with them and they still don't care because they'll still be king of the ashes. Like, it's yeah. the dumbest... It's the most nihilistic fucking... Anyway, sorry, we're getting sidetracked. Anyway, back to normal and uh, everything's great. Yeah, everything will be great by phase four. Great. Misallocation of funds. <laughs> yeah, phase that look, the detail will come. Step Meryl three, from marketing. Step three, Meryl profit. from marketing. She'll she'll get the she'll fill in the blanks a bit and you know, there'll be a press release. They'll sort it out, George. Don't worry. Um, Honestly, just sh- wanna sh- like can we nominate some of our politicians that we can shoot out into space instead? Because there's a few of them that I like. I certainly wouldn't mind shooting Barnaby oh. Joyce into the fucking sun. Like, oh no, call call the moon Hawaii and Scoma will go willingly. <laughs> Actually, speaking quickly of Barnaby, we'll just throw this one in there. Uh, Barnaby Joyce, um, uh, he's been a bit of a wrecking ball over the last uh, few weeks, but uh, it turns out the genius that is uh, the political mastermind of Mr. Joyce, uh, doesn't know how to wear a mask. And uh, police have confirmed that Mr. Barnaby Joyce was fined at a petrol station. He was fined $200 on uh, Monday for not wearing a mask. Uh, But he was apologetic and cooperated with police. So, you know, don't worry about it. The fact that... 10 out of 10 to the person who called that in. Because I heard it was a yeah, call to the Crime Stoppers. Mm. So, like, yeah, it's like the jet, it's like a 1 800 kind of number uh, here in Australia where, you know, you can just, it's like rep- just reporting crimes, but not going straight through to like the emergency triple zero number. Um, yeah, someone saw Barnaby Joyce not wearing a mask out in public and they called that in. And, oh, uh, I'd buy that guy a pint. <laughs> What a legend. Several pints. $5 pints at his local pub is what he deserves. Yeah. Um, now, speaking of misallocation of funds and perhaps spending things Sorry, not very wisely. Just, just on that Barnaby Joy story, the yeah. allegations of sexual uh, harassment, th- those obviously aren't, haven't been oh, no, no. <laughs> investigated. That's definitely not something right. that the, no, no, the legal apparatus could look into at all. But we'll find him. Find yeah. him $200, the mask so. stuff. No, no. Nailed him. Fucking nailed got him, him, guys. Bing, bing, bing. Straight away. Yeah, no, the fines uh, the fines for those allegations will be much lower than $200 in that mm. they won't happen uh, because everything's terrible and the system doesn't work. Um, anyway, misappropriation of funds. Adam, you were saying? Mm. There's been a report. There's been sev- uh, two reports, actually, uh, from this organisation in Australia called the Auditor General who audits things. Uh, and uh, there was this thing. I don't know if you guys remember it. Like before the whole COVID thing kicked off, before mm. the bushfires, before everything like, went like so real like bad. 10, 20 years ago. Yeah. 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 That was like something called sports rorts. Oh, mm. the sports um, rorts. Where they rorted uh, sporting money to, they, they pork barrel. They pork barreled a bunch of government money into marginal seats uh, for sport grants and local community grants. Um, mm. And all the grants that were given out were basically ones that the, gov- the department, the department uh, who goes through and assesses all these things, didn't actually recommend. Well, uh, not, not all. Like some of them were basically they, the department presented its list of all yeah. these different, you know, things that the recommendations as to where the dollars would be best spent. And then the LNP more, more or less ignored those recommendations and kind of placed the money where they wanted to. Now, some worthy programs still got funded just in different amounts and things like that, but it was obviously mm. the money was directed for political rather than efficacious purposes. Let's put it that way. So it was a big scandal at the time. Everyone was really mad about it. And that was around $100 million that went into this yep. scheme. 
Um, and sidebar, just quickly, Bridget yeah. McKenzie, minister at the time, yeah. had to resign. She listened, she's learned, she resigned. Uh, she's listened, she's learned, she's joined the pile of female bodies that the LMP has, yeah. <laughs> has been racking but, up in uh, recent years. Due to old Barnaby's efforts uh, the other day, uh, turns out when you have a new leader, you've got to have a new cabinet. Mm. Uh, so there's a new national cabinet. Uh, and Bridget and when McKenzie- you get a, When you get a new cabinet, you've got to get a new dresser. When you get a new you dresser, do. you've got to get a new bed, you know, so. Mm. Yeah, you've got to throw out the, you know, drapes, put some new ones up. It's called the um, Dinero effect. <laughs> True story. Bridget McKenzie, uh, incidentally, back in national cabinet now. Oh, uh, good. She is. Oh, she, oh, so what she did wasn't corrupt mm. now? I guess it's fine. No, no. Now we've, we've listened. She's listened. She's learned. We've forgiven her. It's all good. She's now, she now has five portfolios. Great. National Recovery and Resilience. Sometimes. Emergency Management. Regionalization, whatever the fuck that means. Regional Communication mm. and Regional Education. Sometimes it really is possible to have it all. And by all, I mean all the government money that you've corruptly handled. <laughs> Um, yes, but, uh, the report that came out from the Auditor General, uh, turns out there's been more funds that have been misspent. Yeah. So it started off as a report that, um, uh, that's understood that $389 million had been allocated to car park construction. Uh, it turns out it's close to 660 million. Whoops. Off by a factor of 300 million. One. Gonna move it across. <laughs> that's fine. Um, so essentially what this, like, there is a, li- like, l- there's been leaked materials of, uh, we've got a friend of the show, Captain Mikey writing in saying, hello, hello, Captain Mikey. How you doing, buddy? Um, the, uh, so the funds were allocated as a, essentially what amounts to a political slush fund to like, and there's records ah. that have been leaked saying like, Hey, rather than bothering to do like a tender process where we assess the, placement of these car parks next to train stations based on their merit and utility and how much dollar the taxpayer is likely to get out of it and all that sort of stuff. Let's have a color-coded Excel spreadsheet where we just literally target marginal electorates with no bid or tender process and then just allocate the funds directly. Saves the whole process of appearing to look as though we were doing it based on merit. You just save time and then just skip to the part where we allocate the money purely for political purposes. Um, and just, you know, avoid having to do all of the work of government stuff that otherwise would be required. So it's good in that, um, you know, it avoids the even just the pretense of government. <laughs> mm. But like, I think, I think you know, uh, this is funny. Something Birmingham came out today because this, this policy was announced prior to the last election. Yeah, weirdly enough, I mean, all of these so- materials lined up and were announced the day before they called the federal election. That's so fucking weird. That's so weird, you guys. That's so weird. The day before. Not, what a coincidence. Has come out and basically said, he's, he's a government minister, and he's basically said, well, it doesn't actually matter because the Australian people uh, made their choice. They looked at all the facts. I can't. And, and they chose the Liberal government. That is the most like, facile fucking argument. Simon Birmingham, you should be fucking ashamed of yourself. What a facile fucking argument against corruption that is. They elected us based on the corrupt shit we did. So obviously, therefore, we had a mandate to do corrupt bullshit. What circular fucking logic is that? <laughs> oh, I can't the amount of things that I want to say that I cannot say on a publicly broadcasted show. It's just like, I'm just incandescent with rage when I heard that. Like, oh, but the, but the public voted a shit, so we've got a mandate to do fucking dumb, corrupt dog shit secretly. Uh, so, yeah, it turns out these these car parks, um, 77% of them, did we, did we give them the stats? I'm, you may have already no, said okay. this, but 70, 77% of the commuter car park sites were in coalition electorates rather than the areas uh, in real need of congestion issues. And this is perhaps the the big thing. None of the 47 project sites selected for funding commitment were proposed by the department. None. So the the, the bureaucrats, the guys that actually go through and initially look at all the applications, send them forward, (laughs) none of them. Great. (laughs) Not even one or two. Like just not even just for window dressing, for plausible deniability. Yeah, I was gonna say you throw one in any city Melbourne just to like throw them off the scent or something. Like you're you're like you're rotting really badly. Like it's it's not even a good rot. It's not even competent rotting, Tom. That's the thing that's frustrating. 
They literally known, might as well have titled yeah. the spreadsheet pork barreling spreadsheet number one for corrupt purposes dot org. Like, you know, I mean, I love a good <laughs> barrel. Spreadsheet dot org. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. They're not even good at it, Tom. <laughs> it's organisational pork barreling. And I love pork in barrels. Don't get me wrong. Mate, uh, when, mate a, when, a, when a, crispy, a like, crispy pork, gonna... mate, on the barbecue or a soft, you know, uh, you know, when you get that crispy, slow cooked pork belly, it goes all yeah. crispy with the salt. Falls off the bone. Oh, yeah. mate, I love a bit of pork. Don't pork get me in the wrong. Barrel. But you um, at least need to have the, dra- you know, you at least need to, you know, put a fig leaf. You just, ne- you need to at least have the modesty dressing so it doesn't look like the kind of hardcore pornography fucking of the Australian public that it is. Like, you really need to, you know, put some Vaseline on that lens. You need to, you know, use some longer distance shots. You need to, you can't just have just penis and vagina slant. Like, it can't be so hardcore. You need to, like, you need to dress it up a little bit. You need to take us to dinner first before you fuck us so hard. Um, But turns out, like, this is commonplace, really. I mean, uh, the, yeah. the old article we've referenced is one from the conversation. Uh, but this has, like, sort of been the system prior to elections um, for years. Go back to even, you know, Labor governments, like, have done this as well. Um, okay, but, like, does it, that the, doesn't the legal, mean it, that is, like, show but, me evidence of those and that is but, also bad. Like, all of but, those things are bad. Yeah. My my point being though is that in, in this article it goes through and sort of explains sort of the, the legal grounding for it. Um, it's like there are guidelines and we have things that mm. there are guidelines, but they're just guidelines and there there are rules around sort of you know having um, arms length organisations to sort of look at all this and all this kind of stuff. But there's a whole at the end of the day, there's, no- there's a whole apparatus of government that is specifically devoted to assessing the needs of the community and what projects should go where. And if we're making those decisions on anything except those measures, that is a waste of taxpayer money. Like that is a, that defeats the point of government. The point of government is it doesn't matter who you're elected to represent. You are the prime minister for everyone. And the money that you spend should be to everyone's benefit, not just your political benefit. That government, you are undermining the whole purpose of government if you behave this way. It's funny you mention that, George, because the uh, the Auditor General, that old that old chestnut, uh, released another report this week, uh, which talked about as the intergenerational report, which is basically a, the Auditor General's like attempt at sort of waxing lyrical about sort of like getting on there, sort of and just sort of looking out <laughs> into the distance and going, I think in their crystal ball, and going, I think this is what the future may hold, and. God knows whether any of those reports will ever be anywhere near correct. But it did say in one of the reports that basically Australia is heading in the direction at the moment because of the lack of migration and other stuff. We're going to be basically older, poorer and worse off over the next sort of 50 or 60 years. Um, And the point that they tried to make in that report was that you should stop spending money on useless shit. If you're going to be putting Australia into like significant debt, if you're going to be like just borrowing out the eyeballs, then at least spend the money on things that boost productivity. Oh, and useful stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Don't don't spend it on (laughs) fucking needless car parks in electorates that don't need them, for example. Yeah, it's like... If you're going to be rorting everybody, at least can the product of that rorting be useful? Yes. Um, and the other thing that this conversation article that you posted, George, I found interesting was that there's no real legal ramification. If a That's minister, the problem. The problem if, with if all minister, of this is it's totally legal. There, there's yeah. no problem with it. That's the problem. Yeah. Is that if, this if was minister, a normal process, I guess. Decides to use their... And we discussed this when Peter Dutton made a bunch of... Um, you know, changes. Decisions. To, it was like to CCTV and yeah, it was like, a security uh, program where basically yeah, a, a bunch of program. different councils applied for grants. Again, the department went through and said, like, hey, this is the Here's order our recommendations. Had, this is our recommendation. Here's where and how much. And Peter Dutton went across out. Oh, that's a labor district. You can suck on some dicks. Love Peter. And they're like, you mm. know, marginal districts or liberal districts, you guys can get all the money. Like, it is it's just like a clear, transparent. Obvious corruption, which is totally in the guidelines, illegal. it does say, yeah, yeah uh, that the minister basically has discretion. Yeah, has final say. Has yeah. final say. It's there, there are words around that, but in broad sense, that's what it says. And, and for every department, basically, 
and they're allowed to do that and it's fine it's so funny um, though because so in- like when you apply like if you're an arts organization that applies for a grant there are all these fucking hoops you need to jump through and you know if you're an organization that gets government money in any way you need to be so specific about here it goes and here's what it does and you know here's how we're going to use the money and then afterwards you got to say here's how we use this money and did it tick off all of these fucking kpis and apparently none of that matters because <laughs> it just really matters whether you're a liberal seat or not. That's the only thing that actually fucking matters in all of this. Like, it's so infuriating that, that there's this double standard if you're on the receiving end of money versus if you're on the distributing end of money, there's just like no controls whatsoever. You can do whatever the fuck you want. And that's just the, those are the Commonwealth grant rules. Like, if you don't like it, you know, should have been elected, dickhead. We, they gave us a mandate <laughs> to fuck you over, you morons. Uh, Tom, Tom, I do want to ask you a question though. What do oh, you yeah, think sure. the likelihood is of any government, whether that be Labor, Liberal, the Greens through some fucking weird turn? Assuming through, there's some designated yeah. survivor type situation where yeah. everyone else in government dies everyone and the only knows. people left are the Greens. What What are the, the odds of a government actually legislating against this effectively corruption? Less than zero, I reckon. <laughs> Absolutely less than zero. Like, I mean, we can be as optimistic and as grandstandingy as we want about democracy and the good of people. And like, you know, you're the prime minister of Australia, not the prime minister of just your voters. Yes. But like, <laughs> but of course, it's 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 so rare to have anyone in politics who actually like thinks like that of course it's a job it's their job and it's what they get like their salary for so they're like well i i want to i don't want to be fired <laughs> or unemployed thanks to not winning an election so of course they'll just like boost up the people who are going to vote them in and like there's no real way around that <laughs> I think, you know, the people uh, who are attracted to being in these sorts of positions are obviously those sorts of people, like, who want the power and the, the, the authority. I just, we just, I wish that after so, so many scandals that we at least had the, the democratic mechanism of voting them out. But I don't think that's going to happen. I think they'll get a fourth term. Like I really like given oh, yeah. well, even all after everything, after the graft, the corruption, yeah. the manifest like Olympian levels of incompetence. Like they're just hmm. going to get back in. And what well, yeah, the, of course. The meme because, I sent you the other day. I was it was that like Anthony Albanese would have to shoot into a crowd. Yes. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah so done. I think that was an article from the shovel where it's like Anthony Albanese shoots into a crowded presser in order to get some fucking attention. Like yeah, that's what it would but like. Take. But that's the thing. It's the the I I don't know. I'm I'm generalizing as hell right now. But I mean, yes, there's people in like liberal electorates and all that sort of stuff who are furious over the vaccine rollout or all that sort of stuff, being like, "Fucking hell, Scotty, you fucked this up." Not or enough. They were really obviously. mad. Not enough. But they were really mad about the fires situation. And mad then, mad like, about the fires. Know, mad about the fact that there was stuff. a rapist in his fucking cabinet, allegedly. Yeah. Like, yeah, they're all really they're, mad that, about it is that. It's not sort a of scandal-free stuff. administration. There are plenty of things with which to latch onto as a mm. reason to vote against this bag no, of no, cunts. They're, they're all they're all really mad about that, and they really hate that sort of stuff. But you know what they hate more? Labor. The Labor Party. <laughs> like, and that's and that's yeah. the thing. Or it's yeah. like, you know what they hate more? The Greens. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. They'll be like, this is all absolute horseshit, but it's not as bad as the Labor Party. And you're like, why? And it's like, well, they're all they're all dogs, aren't they? <laughs> like, they'll just have something stupid like that to say. Which, to be fair, though, I mean, the difference between the Labor Party and the Liberal Party these days is just one's actually in the position to be doing all the bullshit. I, I am under no aspersions that Labor wouldn't be doing this exact same bullshit. I think I, I, I like think they'd be. And God knows what yeah. I don't think oh, they'd yeah. be. Like, I don't think there'd be less. Scandals. I don't think there'd be less corruption, but I do think the people at the bottom would get more of the crumbs. Does that make sense? Yeah, mate. Yeah, like, I'd say maybe more, rather more of than, the crumb. Rather than a situation about- where we go into lockdown and the government says, like, oh, you're in a coronavirus, you know, hotspot and yeah. um, oh, I hope you got some savings or you'll fucking die. Go suck eggs, cunts. Should have been rich. 
Um, Interesting story, at least the, actually. At least the Labour Party would have said something like, here's $500 dollars dues." Like, Yeah, but I suppose, <laughs> though, we'd say to what we said to the Liberal Party, hey, do something about climate change, we're all going to die. And they're like, nah. And we'd be like, hey, Labour Party, do something about climate change, we're all going to die. They're also like, nah. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah. True story, actually. I spoke to my hairdresser the other day and because um, there, is, there is a supplement. Like there's a $500 supplement a week, but you have to be in lockdown for longer than a week, yeah. basically, or two you weeks. Have to be long, to be. Longer than a oh, week. You yeah. need to have less than $10,000 in savings. You need to be standing on your left foot. You need to have one testicle. Yeah. Like, and only every second Tuesday. Yeah. And what was interesting yeah. was that um, uh, he was saying that basically um, there was a deadline for it as well. So, like, you had to apply for that grant or whatever within a certain cutoff period. Um, so, but that ended like last week. We only came out of lockdown like two weeks ago. So, they basically shut the door closed straight after yeah. it finished. Meanwhile, people are still trying to work out like their taxes and God knows what else. Like, anyway, it's yeah. It, yeah. It's why, well, I think we talked about this at the time. It was like that was the Morrison government's like being dragged, kicking and screaming into mm. actually like something. Oh no! Doing something that may possibly be seen as kind of socialist um, for the better of people, but they had to make it so hard to get to, and also like mm. a oh no, we cut it off, we turn off that tap straight the fucking way as soon as we say so, because none of you freeloaders get to live. I don't want any of you thinking you're not going to starve to death for more than a second longer than you need to. Okay. Yeah. I don't want you uh, getting yeah, too safe yeah. and secure. Go pick some fruit, you lazy pricks. Yeah. It, oh, it's such a fucking joke. Um, Do you reckon they're going to so win? Yeah. I reckon they're going to win again. They're oh, going to win. I mean, of, depends, course, of course they are. Only because also... When, uh... Well, it depends when the election is, I suppose. But I think they're, they're probably definitely going to win again because as much as I was saying before of like, oh, there's all... Like, maybe there's all these liberal voters who are like, you know, maybe turning on like people like Scott Morrison as an individual mm. in the party and all that sort of stuff. And they're like, oh, but you know what I hate more? The Labour Party. Mm. All the people who outright hate the Liberals and are all against all this corruption and all this sort of shit were also like, oh, but Labour, like, fuck off, you're just as bad. And then we just split the vote everywhere. And, it not, like, you know, it's the whole thing. It's the Republican thing in the States, right? Of the Oh, they can really rally together. Mm. and get themselves voted in and get shit done whilst all the people who hate them are kind of all over the shop being like, the, yeah. It's the persistence of myth, isn't it? Like, and an example of that, like, is I, I was at a, a, like, a gathering yesterday and and I've had this in a few different conversations now, the Dan Andrews getting beaten up by unionists. Um, theory. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, conspiracy. Yeah, to- 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 totally false fucking nonsense bullshit which has been discredited yeah. like from an obscure queensland blog mm. blabbered out into in the sky the news parliament into, yeah. into the sky news pipeline and now all anyone could talk about is oh dan andrews did you hear the story oh, we can't vote for him now it's like it's just complete rumor i, I um I, and I'm people are, inf- but people are, are buying into it I, i'm just always consistently infuriated that the left seems to have this problem where it's like Yes, you're right, Tom, that they, they are, um, because I think it's, uh, as Recline points it out um, quite frequently, it's that it's a sort of inherent structural bias that if you are a party that needs to appeal to a multiplicity of people, you need to inherently sort of water your message down to appeal to the broadest number of people, right? Yeah. So it leaves you sort of floundering. Whereas if you're a sort of borderline right-wing extremist party, and the whole point is to galvanize a small but very ardent number of base supporters to go out and, you know, do the dirty work for you. Um, That's much easier to do because you can have really clear messaging around it, right? Like you can be really, it doesn't matter if you alienate a bunch of people when you do that because your base will turn out and vote you in. Mm. Um, Whereas a leftist party like the Democrats or the, you know, or Labour here has to try, they've got to appeal to the coal workers in these districts and they also need to appeal to any city lefties and they're like by virtue of having, tr- trying to piece together this broader coalition of people, they end up mm. pleasing nobody and end up, you know, and because they're painting with a less broad palette of emotional, emotionally resonant material to begin with, they're inherently at a disadvantage. Yeah. Um, and but the, the the thing that's infuriating to me about that is that like all of the people, most people are the little guy, 
And so if most people voted in their own self-interest, you know, there's the corruption, there's, you know, all the both sides kind of stuff, but you would be, you as the little guy almost certainly would be better off under a leftist government than you would be under a right-wing government. Like just the way that those kinds of policies work, tax cuts for the rich on the right-hand side versus, you know, like collective bargaining agreements and unions and that sort of stuff on the left-hand side. Like your life measurably, your your selfish, self-interested stuff would be better off for most people voting for left-hand side of politics, but they don't. They vote against their own self-interest because they're distracted by cultural garbage nonsense issues fueled by, you know, the trash fire that is, you know, Fox News and the Murdoch media. Like, it's a it's a tactic which has been used very, very effectively against the left wing for 30, 40 mm-hmm. years. And I don't see it getting any better. Um, and it just makes me like, yeah, incandescent with rage that people will, people who are poor will vote for the right wing party that's cutting corporate taxes and you know, yeah you know, ta- you know doesn't four want to tax the rich and- george mm. <laughs> got a four point plan but, we're gonna be sweet but that's but that's why because they want to stop the boats or they want to stop the fucking chinese or they want to stop the, you know what i mean it's this dumb culture war sort of you know jangly mobile that they distract you with in order to divide people and pull them away from voting in their own self-interest most people mm. are not the top one percent by definition like it it it's infuriating to me and i don't i don't know what we can do to change it it just seems like we're just gonna be in a minority led uh, and like minority government forever like it, it re- oh. i don't see it there it, there being any pathway to labor ever regaining the kind of populist like kevin 07 type you know yeah. run of popularity you, you that they a, have. it seems like impossible from this vantage point you need a you need a um a lightning rod and without a lightning rod it's probably not going to you happen. need a charismatic um, leader and i'm sorry but anthony albanese old pudgy dj albo is not the fucking guy people are not inspired by dj albo they like, just yeah not. yeah dj not albo not. just fronting up a press conference with a dad joke pun isn't cutting it yeah, and i not. love dad joke puns <laughs> one daggy not th- cutting it this year uh, uh, election season 2021 <laughs> daggy dad versus another daggy dad <laughs> like can oh, you like tell he, the difference like he just said something the other day where i was like oh it was like he said something like oh they, they haven't been yeah you know, i was after like barnaby joyce got back in and all that sort of stuff and saying like oh rather than focusing here on the vaccine rollout they've been too busy rolling each other i'm like good nailed him good elbow you nailed it we like got him. Ladies 10, and gentlemen, I don't know, we got him. Maybe a solid stance on climate change would be nice. Asshole. <laughs> well, gentlemen, just, just to finish us off uh, today, um, if you want proof that people don't listen, uh, you only have to look to New South Wales, uh, which has been sort of in various parts of it have been in lockdown over the last sort of week or two. Mm. And... Uh, Bunch of people haven't been listening to those stay-at-home orders. Uh, they've been out in the community jumping around, mm. uh, including two people. Two nude sunbathers were fined a thousand dollars for breaching the COVID nineteen public health orders. Not men, if I'm not mistaken, thousand dollars each. Yep. Uh, mm. After being, and this is the best part, two nude sunbathers. They were being, they were startled by a deer. Mm. After getting lost, oh, they don't. Sorry, they got startled by the deer. The deer then startled lost. them while sunbathing, and they ran. Then they ran into lost, the and the SES had to rescue them. And, and their park. names were Scott Morrison <laughs> and Barnaby Joyce. That's weird. Um, Crazy, no, just like the that's... politicians. So that's not true. George made that up. Uh, well, authorized by the Commonwealth Government. Oh, Government. Yeah, I've got a, a, a few things to try and work out here. So. Some making so one you sort of going they're disobeying all the, the lockdown stuff. They've gone to a national park when they shouldn't have been there and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but it's the middle of winter, so sunbathing nude? Question mark. Second thing. Question mark. Yep. Yeah. Startled by a deer. How does a deer startle you? And I mean, if you I were was naked on a beach why and I turned are you around. Into yeah. the bush naked. Like, that's a bad. Like, what, what did you think? Of, like, I've got I mean, so many questions. Hey, Adam, like, if Adam, I was Adam. lying down somewhere naked and then a deer turned up, I'd be pretty startled. I mean, I'd be like, whoa, it's a deer. 
I or might not run naked into the bush. Here's, 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 here's the factor that they didn't tell you about, Adam. A fistful of pingers. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Someone clearly dropped a shitload of acid before the story and didn't want to tell the national press about it. See, I mean, there's that it's like, angle. oh my god, it's a deer! It's my Patronus! Run! I think, I think the other story kind of going here, which is like. Uh, because the there were there were two men, the people who were rescued, uh, a man aged thirty and another aged forty nine. Nice, just out for a naked sunbathing trip hey, as you hey, do. Nice. I mean, I don't know. Just you're just, saying that there was some no, romantic. No sh- I'm just being no, no, no shame, guys. Like just just be honest with us. Do you do you? Oh, as in they were sunbathing. They were. Yeah. Well, well if you, if you, I mean, if great. you're out there, the like, I mean, you're breaching the COVID orders and that's illegal and all those sorts of things. But no, if you're out there just having an old, you know, the old rough and tumble, that, that's fine. It's Pride oh, Month. Bush, bush shag, as yeah. it were. Don't be ashamed. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's Pride Month. You know, you yeah. you. Exactly. Well, it's not anymore. Would you say that? It do you was then. Like, do you think, like, like, can you imagine, like, when the rescuers showed up, do you reckon they had, like, 20 minutes where they were just, like, or maybe an hour or two, depending on how long they were out there for, like to where they were just like, how do we, how, how do we, we're going to get our story straight. What are we, what yeah. were we doing? <laughs> mushrooms. Yeah. What, what are we, t- <laughs> what are we, we tell a lot them of we mushrooms. were doing? Um, um, but look, it, they're, they're safe and well, so that's good. But also, um, I think as uh, Commissioner Fuller from New South Wales said, it's difficult to legislate against idiots. Yes, Got yes, him. yes, that is that is true. Nailed it. Um, and there was also another aspect of that story, which uh, I only just now remembered and I'm is trying it, to Isn't legislating it. against idiots the job of the New South Wales police? Isn't that like 80% of what they do? No, no, no. They've got to go and um, use specific uh, anti-terror units to pull... Um, you oh, know, YouTubers uh, out of their homes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's more what they're into. Gotcha. Um, yeah, but so another interesting part of this story uh, is only semi-related because rather than it being to do with the uh, the two uh, alleged naked sunbathers who got uh, startled by deers. They were definitely um, naked, Tom. That part is not alleged. One of them was. I think they found one of them naked okay. is, part of the, is an interesting part of the story. The man in his 30s, the 30-year-old, was naked, but the other guy was wearing clothes. And not found in the bush. And so then got the deer. And then ran into the bush. I'm very confused. Yeah, I was going to say, like, uh, one of them's not very good at sunbathing, but I haven't quite decided which one. <laughs> um, but uh, on the same, I believe this was on the same day <laughs> um, uh, that uh, the New South Wales Police Commissioner was giving the press conference about uh, the sunbathers and said the you can't legislate against idiots uh, speech. Then an individual turned up uh, who wanted to uh, serve the New South Wales Police Commissioner with some documents. Um, He approached the Police Commissioner, Mick Fuller, and asked him if he had received his cease and desist notice. And the Commissioner said, don't you come near me. And the man started a spouting that I am the prime creator of this earth as people dragged him away. So someone who had a very interesting uh, beef with <laughs> the New South Wales Premier do, do turned up as well. Do you reckon he knew those two, day. The two naked sunbathing Probably. guys that were doing acid? <laughs> did, 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 sorry, the so third South- guy that escaped? or Potentially. And sorry, New South Wales Police Commissioner, not the Premier, as I said. Sorry. Well, they, they didn't come up to Gladys <laughs> and said, I'm the prime creator of this earth. Did you get my cease and desist letter? <laughs> what, okay, but what's the, what's the Commissioner doing? Oh, God. I, that, uh, well, that the, needs to be ceased and desisted. I don't know. Like the commissioner was just at the podium giving a press conference. And yeah, this man was trying to hand him a cease and desist letter. I was like, oh man, I want to read this note. <laughs> like, like, I you want think, a copy of I this. I uh, knew who he was. I, I, the, it seemed like it. The living soul. <laughs> mm. <laughs> it's Malcolm yeah, Roberts. Yeah. Malcolm yeah. Roberts. It was Malcolm <laughs> Roberts. 
The man, <laughs> the man who approached him, uh, looked like a uh, long, shaggy hair, big, bushy beard. I mean, Malcolm Roberts has changed. We haven't seen <laughs> him in a minute. Name. It could be him. That's true. It I could be him. It's not in the news cycle. Like he was like every week for about a year. The media was he definitely was like... obsessed with him because he was like thoroughly banana pants. But like he also had the crazy eyes that like, to go with it as well. He had the very Those bulgy, piercing blue eyes, eye poppy eyes, yeah. which which definitely made for good um good pictures on. Uh, uh, very clickable articles. Still in Parliament, yeah. I believe. He's still I believe so. Yeah, oh, he's still um, still insane. But um, but like no one. He hasn't said it. anything like, monetizable lately. I guess. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So he's voting still... on things. Yep, he's a senator. That's <sighs> fine. Yep, still is. But we just haven't heard from him much lately. I don't know. Maybe he's. Maybe he doesn't believe the the data on coronavirus is corrupted, so we just haven't heard much from him. Yeah, he's just in in vociferous agreement with the health advice, strangely. Yeah, he's like so across the health advice. Loves the CSIRO when they're talking about, like, you know, uh, epidemiology and all that sort of stuff. But no, it's climate change nonsense. You know, when... um, That's all corrupted. What's what's his name? The health... uh... Chief Health Advisor in Victoria that everyone... Uh, oh, Brett Sutton. Brett Sutton. Smoke, when, smoke Show Sutton. When, when Smoke Show Sutton gets, he's just lost in his eyes and, you know, he just says hashtag daddy and forgets everything else. It's just... Mm. He certainly is a handsome man. Would Would you like to go sunbathing with him? Anyway, on that note, we have been, we are, and we always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, our natural show. Dot com. Make sure you follow us on all the bullshit social medias that have, do, or ever will exist at Unnatural Show. That's uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and motherfucking TikTok at Unnatural Show. Um, make sure you uh, like uh, and uh, subscribe to the podcast on iTunes or your podcast catcher of choice. Share this episode with a friend if you found it uh, entertaining or useful in some way, as maybe as a sexual aid. Um, and uh, make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at George Zavos. You can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. You can follow me on Instagram at AC Doreen. You can follow us all down to the beach at Otford where we'll be having our, uh, our regular Sunday afternoon sunbathing session uh, live on Twitch uh, in a hot tub. So In a hot tub. There you go. Thanks for yep. listening, guys. Uh, love your faces. We shall see you next week. We go to the pub for five dollar pints after the naked sunbathing session in the hot tub. Absolutely not. No. Oh.